Good evening, everybody, and Happy New Year. Welcome into our first edition of the Milford Informer for 2017. Once again, I am your host, Tim Coet. It's always a little bit of a rough transition getting back to work after the holidays. The good news is you made it through the work week, and now we're happy to get your weekend going with a few local news stories. Let's kick things off with a look at tonight's top stories rundown. Tonight, we'll get you caught up with a series of news items from around the Milford area, including an update on the fate of the Milford Water Company, changes to the MWRTA bus route, and an early look at the 2017 local town election. Also tonight, hear from a representative from Walden Behavioral Care as they discuss a new facility that recently opened its doors here in Milford. And later in sports, we'll have highlights from the second annual Scarlet Hawk Classic Basketball Tournament, as well as reaction from boys coach Paul Seaver. We begin tonight with a few short news items. We start with the Milford Water Company. News broke just prior to the holidays regarding the fate of the water company. After several years of analysis and discussion, the Milford Board of Selectmen announced they have reached an agreement in principle with the water company's management regarding the town's possible takeover of the assets and operations of the water company. Here is a portion of the formal press release from the Board of Selectmen. The price finally agreed upon, subject to negotiation of further detail, and to be presented to town meeting is $63 million, a fair price based upon in-depth analysis of potential future outcomes. If approved by town meeting, that sum will be financed by a 30-year bond. The key to that number from the town's perspective was the careful review and analysis of how that debt can be undertaken and repaid without impact upon the taxpayers and within the current water company rates. The press release goes on to say the Board of Selectmen hoped to call a special town meeting in March of 2017 for articles solely related to the water company acquisition. Well before that time, final detail will be negotiated and more information will be available, particularly as we approach Finance Committee review and recommendation. The board has been and is steadfast in its belief that it is now time to give the people of Milford, through their duly elected town meeting members, the opportunity to decide for themselves whether or not it is the time to assume public control of its vital public resource. As of now, a date has not been officially set for the special town meeting to discuss the water company acquisition. We will continue to provide as much information on this issue as possible in the weeks to come. Meanwhile, another town resource that will be undergoing some changes is the local bus transportation system. According to a recent report from the Milford Daily News, there will be a few tweaks made to the fixed bus route in the new year. As ridership has increased since the service launched in late August, changes are being proposed to help keep Milford's bus service in sync with the Holliston-Framingham route. The biggest proposed change is moving the transfer location for the two routes from Mission Springs in Holliston to Quarry Square in Milford. The MWRTA is also looking to add two additional stops to the Milford route. Those stops include the Reliant Medical Group on West Street and Groves at Milford Apartments. Final tweaks to the bus route are expected to be completed by the end of this week and should go into effect by January 9th. And finally, just two months removed from last year's contentious general election, things are already starting to pick up for Milford's 2017 local spring elections. With nomination papers available at Town Hall beginning on Monday, January 9th, this year's races should begin to take shape in the weeks to come. Now this year residents will have the opportunity to vote for two seats on Milford's Board of Selectmen. Current Selectman Chair Bill Buckley's seat on the board is up for re-election, and the seat currently filled by Brian Murray will be available as well, as Mr. Murray will be vacating his seat as he moves to serve into the 10th Worcester District as State Representative. Mr. Murray's seat will have two years remaining after this election. Chairman Buckley has announced that he will seek re-election, while current school committee chair Mike Walsh has announced he intends to run for the vacated seat on the board. As for the school committee, Mr. Walsh has stated that if elected to the Board of Selectmen, he plans to continue to serve out his term on the school committee, which is set to expire in 2018. Two school committee seats will be up for re-election this spring. Those seats currently belong to Jen Parson and Joe Callery. Neither Ms. Parson nor Mr. Callery have formally announced whether they will seek another term. 
Other positions on this year's ballot include one seat on the Board of Assessors, one seat on the Board of Health, one seat on the Parks Commission, one seat on the Planning Board, and two seats on the Board of Library Trustees. The positions of Town Clerk, Town Moderator, Tree Warden, Sewer Commissioner, and Highway Surveyor will also be up for re-election. The town will also look to fill the constable position left vacant after the tragic passing of Barbara Clement. As of now, there are no contested races on the ballot, but that is expected to change as the election season picks up. The 2007 town elections will be held a little less than three months from now on Tuesday, April 4th. Switching gears now, Walden Behavioral Care has recently opened a new clinic here in Milford geared toward helping adolescents, teens, and adults dealing with eating disorders. To find out more details on the services this new clinic will provide, I sat down with Program Director Laura Royas. And we are happy to be joined on the Milford Informer this week by Laura Royas. She is the Program Director, uh, part of Walden Behavioral Care. Uh, you've just opened up a new facility here in the Milford area, so first and foremost, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, so Walden Behavioral Care, it's been in existence since 2003, uh, doing great work here in the New England area. Can you tell us a little bit about the work that Walden does? Absolutely. Walden Behavioral Care is the leading eating disorder treatment center in New England and one of a handful of treatment centers across the country that offer a full continuum of care. And by a full continuum of care, what I mean is we offer services from weekly outpatient therapy and everything on up to inpatient level of care and the ability to transfer from one level of care to another based on one's needs very seamlessly. Uh, so focusing on eating disorders, obviously a, a sensitive topic and one, uh, as I was looking through a lot of your material, that, that really impacts a, a, a large percentage of the population. Can, can you talk a little bit about uh, how, uh, how big of an issue this, this has really become uh, with, with the country's population in general? So eating disorders are a huge issue. We often think of them as a adolescent or a young adult issue, but it's, it's very untrue. Um, We've treated adults in their 70s, uh, 60s. Eating disorders affect everybody. There's approximately 30 million Americans who are struggling with eating disorders, and a third of whom are men at this time. And so, I mean, clearly a, a need for, uh, for facilities, opportunities for people to, to, to go and seek out care and uh, Walden Behavioral Care uh, with a lot of these facilities throughout the New England area. But as we mentioned, uh, you are heading up the, uh, the, the newest uh, clinic, which is uh, just recently opened here in Milford. Can, can you tell us a little bit about uh, what brought your facility to the Milford area? It's quite simple, the demand. Sure. <laughs> I'm also the director of our Worcester Clinic, and what we were finding was that a large number of people were traveling from the Milford area to our Worcester Clinic. It's a good 40-minute commute, um, and based on that information, we decided that we needed to be down in this area. And so um, talk about a little bit of the um of the types of treatment that, that people coming to uh, the facility here in Milford, or any of your facilities for that matter, what, what, uh, what, what type of care can people expect when they walk into one of your clinics? First and foremost, they can expect individualized care specific to their needs. What we offer in our Milford Clinic is assessments for our higher levels of care. So somebody looking for inpatient or residential wouldn't be able to have that level of care in Milford, but they would be able to be assessed and then directly admitted to one of our other facilities. On site in our Milford location, we have IOP programming, and what that is is an intensive outpatient program. It's more intense than weekly outpatient therapy, but it still allows individuals to work or go to school or uh, detain or um, be involved in their family obligations as they need to be. One of the things I, w I found interesting looking through your information was the um was Walden's commitment to, to keeping families involved in sort of the process, and, and it seems as though a lot of times this is a, a difficult situation to work through, having an eating disorder. I'm sure you can feel alone sometimes, and so having the family so closely involved in the treatment process, uh, I'm sure is, is something that's very helpful to, to patients who have sought out help through your facilities. Absolutely. We try to involve family as much as possible, and that's one of our reasons for being in the local community. It's harder for families to leave work early or um, manage childcare for the other siblings to drive to Waltham. By bringing treatment into one's community, it allows family to be involved easily. 
And so the clinic here in Milford at 229 East Main Street, and it's, uh, it's open now. So uh, again, just uh, I'm, I'm sure that this is going to be a great resource for uh, not only people here in the Milford community who might be watching, and this is something that impacts them, but Milford always seems to be sort of that centralized location in the state that is convenient for anybody to get to. So this is going to be, I'm sure, a great resource really statewide for people to find out that this facility exists. Absolutely. We're right off 495. We're very easy to get to. And scheduling an intake appointment is as easy as giving us a, a phone call or going online and filling out a form. And uh, so if, if people are tuned in and this is something that affects them personally or they know of someone who this impacts, uh, what are sort of the, the, the first ways that they can start to, to reach out to uh, maybe explore uh, getting care through one of your clinics? I'm always happy to answer phone calls and ask, answer questions over the phone um, or they can email us. There's also a fair amount of information on the website. We try to make care very easily accessible um, and reduce the number of barriers that people may find. We accept almost all insurances and we'll negotiate with an insurance plan if it's one that we haven't seen before, but that happens very rarely. So that's great. So it's very, it, it's very easily, easily accessible, the information on the website. They can contact the facility directly. And, and then again, as you say, in, insurance is pretty widely accepted. So this is a, a very easy process to get involved in, and uh, people can, can seek out the care that they need. Definitely. A lot of people will ask us if they need a referral from their physician. They do not need a referral. That would slow down the process a little bit, but um, they can give us a call directly. Well, that's great. This is all extremely valuable information and, and a great facility now here uh, open in the Milford area uh, for anyone who is looking to seek out care uh, related to an eating disorder. So uh, again, we'll, we'll make sure we have all of the website information available right here on the screen now. So uh, if, if you'd like to get more information, that is all accessible to you there. But in the meantime, Laura Royas, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Both of the MHS basketball teams started off 2017 with games away from their home gym. As we wait for our first basketball coverage of the new year, let's take the opportunity to get you caught up on the action that took place during the holiday break. The boys hosted their second annual Scarlet Hawk Classic, an invitational tournament that brought Milford together with Waltham, Norwood, and Tantasqua Regional High School for two days of exciting hoops action. We were happy to cover the Hawks during both days of tournament play, so here are the complete highlights of Milford in the Scarlet Hawk Classic. Night one of the tournament brought a familiar opponent to the floor as Milford prepared to take on the Tantasqua Warriors. Last February, Milford and Tantasqua met up in the championship round of the first Scarlet Hawk Classic, with the Hawks emerging victorious. Could Milford notch another win in this budding rivalry? In the opening minute of play, Anthony Arcudi would make sure the Hawks started off strong as he took the feed from Caden Kelly and quickly cut to the basket, claiming the opening points of the night. As it turned out, Arcudi was ready to put on a show over the game's first eight minutes. Just seconds after Connor McCaffrey knocked down a three to get Tantasqua on the scoreboard, Milford would shoot a long pass ahead to Arcudi. He'd set his feet and drain the shot to answer right back. Later in the quarter, with Milford up by seven and the shot clock winding down, Caden Kelly would miss on the off-balance jumper. But the Hawks would control the rebound and kick the pass to a wide-open Arcudi who hits the corner three to push Milford's lead to double digits. With just over two and a half minutes to play in the first, Arcudi would connect on this jump shot from the free throw line to give himself an even 10 points for the first quarter. In the closing seconds of the period, Joey DeMarco would come off the bench and he would come through with another three for the Scarlet Hawks. Milford would drop 20 points in the first eight minutes, taking a 13-point lead in the process. Milford would continue to showcase their depth in the second quarter. Zach Tomorrow receives the pass here in the corner and drives baseline. He can't connect on the layup, but sophomore Brendan White is there to grab the rebound, and he gets the turnaround jumper to fall. A few minutes later, it's junior Shane Kosket who tracks down the loose ball, and through heavy traffic he is able to take it the length of the floor and shows great body control as he takes it to the basket. Then it's Arcudi with a terrific bounce pass up the floor to Zach Tomorrow, and this time the junior is able to finish. Six different Scarlet Hawks would find themselves on the score sheet through the first half. 
Meanwhile, Milford's size and athleticism would make life miserable for Tantasqua on the offensive side of the floor, with the Hawks creating multiple turnovers and block shots through much of the half. Here Arcudi uses his quick hands to create yet another turnover before turning on the Jets and landing the bucket that gave Milford a 35-8 lead with just over two minutes remaining in the half. From there, however, the struggling Warriors offense would start to come to life. After free throws finally put Tantasqua into double digits, junior Evan Couture knocked down a three to make it five quick points. Connor McCaffrey would then come through with back-to-back -back buckets from beyond the arc to complete an 11-0 Tantasqua run. Overall, the Warriors would score 15 of the final 17 points in the half, tightening the score to 37-23 to as the teams hit the locker rooms. Momentum seemed to stay with the Warriors through the early stages of the third quarter. Here Shane Kosket's pass gets intercepted by Tantasqua's Michael Frio, and eventually the Warriors are able to find McCaffrey, who lands his fourth three-pointer of the game, bringing the once 27-point Milford lead down to 11. After a bucket from Kelly brought the lead back to 13, Milford would move the ball up the floor and transition, where they'd find Arcudi wide open on the near wing and he would drain the shot. Milford's other senior captain would then jump into the action as Zach Tamani takes the pass from White and he hits the three to push his point total into double digits. Minutes later, it's Brendan White dishing the pass to Arcudi who nets his fourth three-pointer of the game. After weathering the early storm from Tantasqua to start the second half, Milford would outscore the Warriors 24-10 in the third quarter, and that would send the Hawks into the fourth with their largest lead of the game up 61-33. With the bench logging most of the fourth quarter minutes, the Hawks would score just eight total points in the frame, but by that time the game was out of reach. Milford would defeat the Tantasqua Warriors in the Scarlet Hawk Classic for the second straight year, winning this game by a final score of 69-46. Day 2 of the Scarlet Hawk Classic featured a matchup of Hawks versus Hawks. Back on Day 1, the Waltham Hawks were able to outlast a tough Norwood team, winning by a final score of 75-69 to earn their spot in the championship game. It was the Waltham Hawks who would get off to a quick 4-0 start before Milford would find Anthony Arcudi, fresh off a career-high 22-point performance against Tantasqua, and he'd bury his first look of the night to bring Milford within one. Arcudi would get into early foul trouble in this one, so the rest of the team would need to step up to keep the offensive attack rolling. Here the Waltham defense completely loses track of Zach Tamani, who takes the feed from Shane Kosket and nails the three. Then Tamani slips past four different defenders, taking it to the hoop for two more. Milford would lead by a margin of 9-6 heading into the second quarter, but their offense was about to get a major boost courtesy of their sixth man. Just off the mark on the shot, Caden Kelly tracking that loose ball all the way out to midcourt. It ends up in the hands of Tamani. Now here's Davila wide open from the wing and he drains it. Davila takes the long lead pass and this time the layup lands. Davila from three, and Nate Davila really heating up in this second quarter. We travel under two minutes to play. Tricky bounce pass inside, and it's plucked away by Davila. He goes coast to coast, turns around, and lays it in for two. Here's Davila again. They feed the hot hand, and he drains the three. And right now, Davila just cannot miss. Backed by a 13-point second quarter performance from Davila, Milford would head into halftime with a 33-20 lead. Milford would continue to build up their lead once the second half got underway. Early on, we see Zach Tamani and Shane Kosket team up to force the Waltham turnover, and then Tamani would take it the other way for two. Kosket would get into the offense a little bit later, showing good touch as he gets the floating shot to fall, upping Milford's lead to 15. Then it's Tamani and Arcudi coming together to create the steal, and then on the run, Tamani finds Nate Davila who finishes at the rack. Milford would allow just nine Waltham points in the third quarter, and for the second game in a row, the Scarlet Hawks would be in full command heading into the fourth. As that fourth quarter got underway, we would see more quality play out of Milford's bench. First, it's Zach Tamaro who drains the wide open three. Then off the ensuing inbounds, it's Tamaro again who makes the steal and takes it back for two more. Then off the Davila miss, it's Mike Traficante who fights for the rebound. He can't land the shot, but Brendan White keeps the possession alive and ends up with the bucket to push Milford's lead to 22 points. 
Every single member of the Scarlet Hawks bench would see the floor in the fourth quarter, and despite a late search from Waltham, Milford would hang on to defeat the Hawks by a final score of 59 to 46. Milford moves back over 500 overall on the season, and they win the Scarlet Hawk Classic for the second straight year. Coach, obviously uh, the, the first game in that tournament, you, you were able to rematch against Tantasco, who you played in the championship game uh, of the yep. first annual tournament last year. Uh, it seems like there's a there's a little bit of a rivalry brewing between Milford and Tantasco. The, the, the schools have matched up in a lot of sports over the last few years, but uh, yep. you guys were able to really dominate that game. It got a little bit close at the half, but but all in all, Milford was in control for most of that night. Uh, you know what, what what was going so well for you in that in that first game? Yeah, well, it's uh, it's funny you mentioned rivalry. I mean, I when I was a senior at Milford High, we played Tantasco. We were 16 and 0. They were 17 and 0, and they beat us. Um, that was a big game my senior year, and you know now they came back. And last year, you know we were they were 18 and one. They went on to the state semifinals, and we needed a win to get in, and we we, we got it last year. And um, you know this year we came out, and you know we I think we had a little more experience than they did. They lost four starters from a year ago, um, but they're always a, a competitive team. And you know our defense has been the key all week. You know we've defended the ball very well. Uh, you know not allowing a lot of points per quarter. It, it, it's really helped us. I mean, we gave up 46 to Tantasqua and then 46 again to Waltham on Thursday. I mean, our defense is kind of really, um, you know, pushing us to where we want to be as a, as a team overall. And, and you look at some of the individual performances o over the course of this tournament, Coach. Uh, I want to talk to you first about Caden Kelly, who has been uh, averaging close to a double-double in every game he's played so far this season. But in particular, yep. uh, that performance that he had against Tantasqua, 21 rebounds in that game, which was a, a, a career high uh, so far for him. Uh, he just continues to be uh, an absolutely dominating force inside for you guys. Yeah, I mean, he's when he wants a rebound, he's going to get it. That's his mentality. I mean, I've, I've never seen a, a better rebounder than him. Um, in terms of his overall production this season, I mean, he's, he's literally a point away from averaging a double-double. He's averaging right around nine points offensively, but he's averaging, I think, it's uh, 14 rebounds a game right now. Um, and, you know, he's been in double digits rebounding-wise every game this season through um, through the first couple weeks here. And, I mean, he, he's, he's unbelievable on the glass, and he's a big boost because – um, you know, in our in our three wins this season, it's not rocket science. We've out rebounded our opponent in each of those three wins, and he's he's it's helped us win those basketball games. He's the anchor down low for us, of course. All right, you got the holiday tournament uh, under your belt, Coach. How have you been uh, working things as you move towards uh, you know the uh, January and February? You really start to dive into your your Davenport yep. side of your play now. Um, how are things uh, progressing in that manner in terms of? Uh, you know what you learned about your team in December, and, and what you want to do moving forward. Yeah, well, our, I mean, the Hockamock League this year is, is very interesting. Obviously, the the big side, the six Division One teams, they're loaded this year, and I think we saw that in the beginning of the season because our schedule started with three straight crossover games against big opponents. We we beat King Philip, but then lost to Franklin and Taunton. Um, you know, and and that the the big side of the league is 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 very good right now. Our side of the league is wide open and you know there's four teams currently tied at one and two for first place in, in league record and then the fifth and sixth place teams are 0 and three so i mean it's been the big beat up on the small to start the season and you know ironically enough we're, we're three and two right now and we're we're in first place on our side of the league believe it or not and you know that's all going to be determined uh, obviously once we get into you know playing our davenport opponents which we start next friday with stilton you know things on our side of the league are wide open and you know, if we can take advantage of it, um, you know, that's a big team goal of ours. Sadly, the winning streak ended at two games for the Hawks. They returned to action this past Wednesday with a third straight non-conference game, this time in Medway. Milford cruised into the fourth quarter with an 11-point lead, but some sloppy play by Milford, combined with some key shots from Medway, allowed the Mustangs to steal the victory by a final score of 44-43. The Milford girls, meanwhile, have played just one game in the last 17 days. That game came back on December 27th, where the Lady Hawks notched an easy 60-31 win over Hudson High School. The girls are currently tied for second place in the Davenport standings, with an overall record of 4-1. The Lady Hawks are in the midst of a four-game road swing. Their next home game will be on January 18th.
Coming up on Saturday, Heartsong Spiritual Wellness will be hosting a vision board hypnosis intensive. Presented by certified hypnotist Mary Rubino, the vision board hypnosis intensive will allow participants to have fun with like-minded seekers while setting goals to move forward into the new year. Each participant will be given informational booklets and a journal and all the necessary materials to create a vision board. There will also be refreshments, a writing exercise, and a group hypnosis session. The Vision Board Hypnosis Intensive is taking place on Saturday, January 7th, over at the First Unitarian Universalist Church on Pine Street from 1 to 5 p.m. For more information, log on to their website at heartsongspiritualwellness.com. And coming up next week, parents can register for the upcoming Art with Heart program at the Milford Town Library. Art with Heart is a program designed to engage children grades K through 3 in creative art and storytelling. Registration for all storytime programs at the library will be open from now until January 13th when the lottery will be held. The Art with Heart sessions will take place on January 18th and 25th at the Town Library beginning at 4 p.m. For more information, you can contact the Youth Services Department at 508 508- 473-2145 extension 216. That is all we have for you on this week's show. As we start out the new year, we want to remind everyone, whether you're watching us here on Milford TV or on YouTube, that we want to get out into the community and cover the stories important to you. If you have an idea for a story, or you know of an upcoming event you want us to cover, we encourage you to get in touch with the studio. You can contact us via our studio phone line, or you can email me directly using the address news at milfordtv.net. We hope you will join us again next time. Until then, from all of us here at Milford TV, this is Tim Coet saying have a great week. So long, everybody.